Hi, my name is Elisa Hanley. I am the branch manager for Pupil Transportation. Most of you um, have uh, been in these meetings before, and so therefore you have met me before. Um, we have today, Mr. We've got some. Bear with me for one moment. We're going to mute everyone. There we go. Um, we have got Jeff Lloyd with Kimi or Kentucky Employers Mutual Insurance uh, today to talk about um, workman's comp and uh, risk assessments um, for for our transportation areas and um, some of the things that as directors and as finance officers that we need to keep in mind um, when it comes to our work area so that we can prevent as much as possible or mitigate uh, the cost to our districts um, when it comes to uh, workman's comp. So uh, Jeff, if you want to go ahead and take it from here, I will um, go ahead and take attendance throughout and let me know if you need anything. Perfect. Thank you very much. And <clears throat> um, as uh, Lisa said, my name is Jeff Floyd. I work with Kentucky Employers Mutual Insurance and I uh, work in the safety and loss control department. And a little background quickly about us is uh, we do insure about 145 school boards in the state of Kentucky. So there's a good chance if you're on this call that we have your uh, workers comp coverage. I hope that we do, but I also will give you my uh, contact information at the end. If, if Even if we don't have your coverage, if you have any questions about uh, any things we talk about today or uh, any other safety related questions, I'd be more than happy to help out any, any way that I can. So one of the things that, you know, a, a little bit, and I, I know that probably uh, you all are, some of you, if not all of you, are pretty familiar with what an experience ride is. And I, I think this is a good presentation because it, it, it does get into, um, kind of the why a little bit about safety. I always like to to pres uh, uh, talk briefly about the why. I think that's important. I think sometimes as safety people, we we often uh, forget to teach the why. And and so, you know, the, the why here is why do we have safety programs? Why do we have uh, the efforts made that we do? And, and I, I've always felt like there's there's at least three main reasons and and usually when we give a safety presentation on just about any topic I will ask you know why why do we have why does your company or your school or whoever uh, put forth a safety effort and oftentimes somebody will say uh, money you know in the back they'll say money and I always say you're right that's one reason it's not all of them, but it is one reason. And, you know, you as a, an employee also want to work for a, a, a company or school system that sees it that way because they're, they're, they're managing the budget and, and workers' compensation is, is one of the uh, larger items on the budget and, and affects a, a school or a company in a lot of ways. And one, one is definitely through the experience mod, and you'll see that as we as we talk about that uh, today, hopefully. The other thing that that I will say is that uh, you know, as far as reasons why, because it's the right thing to do. Uh, but from a financial piece, not only is it the the experience mod, but it's also to your your your. Uh, uh, I think at its core, a good safety program is a protection of the most valuable resources any organization has and that and that is that is the people the the employees and you know you a lot of times i'll ask you know what's the most valuable resource of this organization and you'll get different answers and um but hopefully the message is out that people know that it's the people and it is you know buses don't get driven kids don't get brought to school uh, they don't get fed. They don't get taught uh, if if the employees aren't there to do 
to do the job. So and do it efficiently, you know, and, and that's another thing, the efficiencies that you gain from from uh, having a safety program are uh, can be uh, quite a bit, you know, and we'll see some of that in this presentation just through the experience line, but I also mention the other reasons, you know, it's the right thing to do. Uh, many uh, of, of our, your employees and, and people that you work with, you're as close to them as you are your own family. And it is very difficult when one of them get seriously injured or, or, or hurt or life changed, you know, and we will talk about that. some. you know, we have about 120, 1,500 policyholders, and, and uh, so we see some quite a few injuries, and they don't all have to be fatal to be sad. You know, when you know someone's life has changed, uh, it's tough, and so that that is, and, and it's also a, a, a selfish, in a good way, selfish reason why employees should want to work safe because they want to be able to do what they want to do when they can do it. Um, you know, it, it, it's sad when someone that you know likes to, let's we'll say, play golf and they twist a knee, blow out a knee. Well, they won't be playing golf for a while. So the, their life, their enjoyment of their life has changed for the worse. So, and when you're talking to employees about safety, one of the things that you want to uh, achieve is to get their buy-in. And that, that, you know, it's explaining it in that way, I think, goes a long way to achieving buy-in because you want them, you don't want employees, you're trying to build a, a culture of safety and you don't want employees taking chances, uh, skipping safety protocols and so forth for the sake of time or, or whatever and injuring themselves. So, all right, enough said. We're going to roll into what we're going to talk about today. I want to give you just a, a, a kind of a brief uh, background on workers' compensation, the premium basics, and then we're going to talk about experience rating basics and the principles of such, and then how you can control your premium. Uh, you'll see uh, uh that i hope uh and then we're going to throw out some numbers you know i told you that that we have about 145 school systems in kentucky I actually think it's exactly 145 um that we we write and a good thing about that then is that we have quite a bit of data uh to to look at trends see what's what's going on uh, as far as injury numbers and, and that sort of thing. So I'll share some of those with you at the end. I have I have some that are, are all school employees and then some that are just transportation related. So, and I hope you find that interesting. I, I certainly do, but you know, I, that's what, that's what I do for a living. So, okay, workers compensation is insurance that, that enables a person or an organization to transfer the financial consequences of a loss to an insurer. The insurer in exchange for premiums paid agrees to pay for covered losses, which is basically what insurance is. We put a price on it. Uh, if you accept that price, then you have a policy and that policy say, basically says that for that period of time, any any injury uh, that, that that you incur during that time frame, we're going to be there, you know. And and that's one of the things our, our former CEO used to say that I loved is you know we we sell promises, and that is a promise that we're going to be there and and pay uh, for that bad day that somebody had. So. Um, you all know this, especially insurance premiums are a significant expense for businesses across the Commonwealth. Um, we at Kimi like to talk about uh, your ability uh, to, to, to a pretty good extent in controlling your destiny. And in, in fact, we give, we give uh, 
an award each year to the, the, the best of our best. And we actually call it the Destiny Award because we feel like they, they are uh, controlling their destiny. And, and we, uh, this year, we have a, a few schools up had on the back while I have a chance, uh, Corbin Independent, um, Warren County Board of Education, Metcalf County Board of Ed, Marion County, uh, or we're all winners of the, our Destiny Award this year. And, and uh, one of the um, trigger points for being eligible for that is having an experience mod of a 0 0.80 or less. And that'll make a little more sense if it doesn't already uh, here in a little bit. But controlling your destiny. And so basically what, from a safety uh, standpoint, what we mean by controlling your destiny is that typically you get back what you put into it. And um, it, it stands to reason that, uh, and, and I can back this up with data that, that shows that people that, that put forth the effort, that, that have a, a foundation uh, the safety program that's foundationally strong has uh, regular and routine training of their employees, uh, conducts accident investigations, invests in equipment, conducts um, safety audits or, or facilities audits of their uh, facilities that, that that investment is going to pay off. And, you know, the fortunate thing is, and we'll, we'll see that in a lot of ways, the, the costs associated with the, that, uh, with, with doing most of these things are, is time. You know, when you invest in safety equipment and that forth, uh, that's, and such, obviously there's a cost there, but the majority of, of uh, the other commitment is based on time. So, uh, putting forth time and effort to, to do these things. And so uh, moving on, I want to talk quickly about remuneration, which is payroll and how uh, your premium is developed. And so uh, your policy premium is based on the amount of, of payroll remuneration that you paid to your employees during a policy period. And it, it, it's money or substitutes for money. The following is general but not exclusive list of remuneration that Kimi would base your premium on. And that would be payroll commissions, bonuses, overtime payments, holiday, vacation, or sick leave, payment to employees for any basis other than time work. So basically it's gonna be, be your payroll. And you know this, but prior to the policy, we, your agent, We'll, we'll work with you to get uh, an estimate of what you will pay in, in, in payroll for the next year. Many of our schools have a policy period that starts July 1st, not all of them, but a fair a majority of them uh, do. And so for July 1, 2022, here in the next couple of months, I'm sure, you will be gathering information on what you project the payroll will be for the 21-23 policy period. And then at policy end, we will do a payroll audit and basically match, uh, or not match, but uh, compare the actual versus what was estimated. And in most cases, schools are pretty spot on. I mean, it. Uh, there may be a few instances where some things um, um, didn't didn't follow through, or you paid more than you uh, thought you might. But for the most part, they're pretty accurate. But basically, at the end of that, you will have either uh, paid more payroll than you thought you would have in that estimate, and you owe us a little money, or you will have paid less payroll than you thought you were going to, and we will owe you money. Uh, so that that's just kind of uh, getting the books uh, closed out, I guess you'll say. But so basically, it's and all schools do that. You have your guesstimated, 
your guesstimated uh, payroll. And then the, the next thing is comparing, or not comparing, but putting that payroll into class codes. And the schools will have three um, major class codes. Class codes are established by the National Council on Compensation Insurance. They categorize employers who have common types of exposures. They, they categorize employees who have. So, you know, in, in schools, the vast majority of them, if not all, are going to have three class codes. And they're going to have the 8868, which is uh, the, your teachers, uh, administration, and so forth. And then you're going to have 9101, which is going to be um, custodial, food service, uh, that sort of thing. And then 7380, which is transportation. And, and you know, there's the class code book is humongous. So just about any type of job you can think of, typically there's a class code for. Now there's some that are that are all encompassing like warehouse that just about any type of warehouse would fall into unless they do something odd that uh, puts them and changes the exposures. But basically what they're, what they're saying is that in 8868, that all of the uh, schools, teachers and admin, they're gonna have basically the same exposures and they're gonna come up with, uh, well, let me talk a little bit more about that. So I kind of mentioned that. These are the people that would be in that 8868, your teachers, administration, uh, guidance counselors, clerical, social workers, coaches, employees who assist these employees, teachers, aides, assistant coaches, et cetera. And then you have um, the all other, which is custodian, food service, uh, maintenance inside the building. And then 7380, which is the the bus drivers is going to include drivers, garage, maintenance employees, and bus monitors. We're going to focus on all, the, all of those three for a moment as we talk about um, the experience mod. So the next thing, so now we've, we've got our payroll in line for each individual class code. So we're going to go if you think about it, we're going to go through and we're going to determine how much payroll we're going to have for 8868, how much payroll we're going to have for 9101, and how much payroll we're going to have for 7380. Um, then we're going to look at rates. So these are our rates that were as of January 1, 2021. Uh, they, they may have changed the first of this year a little bit, but I doubt it. They may have gone either down a little bit or, or up, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit. So you can see class code 8868, the teachers and, 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 and administrative staff, our, we have two, two tiers of rates, a standard and a preferred. And we'll talk briefly about that in a little bit. Um, but the, the standard rate for that is 45 cents per hundred dollars of payroll. So if you had if you had a, an employee uh, for the sake of of easy math that had uh, or you, you in that particular class code you had a hundred and a hundred thousand dollars worth of uh, worth of payroll, we're going to take that $100,000 and we're going to divide that <clears throat> by $100. And then we're going to take, uh, which that's $1,000, we're going to take that, multiply that by 0 0.45 and they're going to pay us, uh, you, would, you would then owe uh, $450 for those employees premium for a year. Same with, with all other employees, and that's in the standard rate. Now, if it were, if, if you were in the preferred or preferred tier, 
uh, it would be $280. And so let's, for the sake of argument and the same comparison, uh, $100,000 worth of payroll for the bus drivers, the premium on that would be uh, $5,230. So that you can see, and, and that's to reflect the risk, that's to reflect, and that, that's not based, none of this is based on you individually, this is based on school systems in the state of Kentucky. And, and that's based on uh, everybody that uh, has an injury that is, that is, uh, has their insurance with a, a, a keen ear or liberty or, or whoever those those injuries are reported to ncci and so they they pretty much know out of 170 plus school systems in the state of kentucky they pretty much know what the uh, overall expenditures were for injuries uh, year in and year out, and that's where they that's where they come up and 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 we work with our actuaries. We get those numbers and they determine what our rate should be to cover uh, those losses. Now, same side of the coin on the bus drivers. If if you were in our preferred tier, that premium, additional premium or whatever, would be three thousand two hundred and forty dollars. So you can see in that super easy little example that's already a savings of a, almost a couple thousand dollars so um makes it makes a big difference now we're going to get into the experience mod i'm going to tell you a little bit about about it it's mandatory for all businesses who qualify some uh some businesses don't qualify because of their size and so forth but what an experience mod does is, is, is a plan that is designed to predict future loss experience based on previous results. Um, the experience of an individual business is compared to others within their own industry. So what I was telling you about in those in the overall losses, the overall um, loss information for the school industry what they're doing is they're trying to come up with a a a number that would reflect your prior experience and, re, and we talked about controlling your own destiny it provides a method of tailoring the cost of insurance to the characteristics and experience of an individual employer so Basically, what it, what it's doing here is that you know it, it, all those rates that I showed you, pretty much every every school system that we insure, all 145 of them, they start they start right here. So, and we're we're going to see that no matter you know basically the only thing that would change the premium size would be the size of the 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 payroll the estimated and, and, and payroll so and 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 really that's not fair you know so basically if you had the point i'm getting at is if you had a, a school system that their their premium based on these rates they had the same amount of payroll for for this uh for 88 68 the same amount of payroll for 9101 and the same amount of payroll for bus drivers two separate schools but totally the same in terms of the payroll they're paying the exact same whether they're in standard or preferred they're paying it. and that's not fair because school a might make a little better safety effort they may have the foundational pieces of a of a safety program the the written um, handbook they may have continued training initial training at the time of hire and then continued uh, training throughout their employment and they may do uh, provide their employees with good personal protective equipment and 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 harnesses and lanyards for fall protection and so on and so forth the other school b may not you know they may they may not have any of those pieces and they may not put forth any kind of effort and i can tell you that that history would tell you that 
school B would have a whole lot higher uh, loss uh, ratio than than school A. So it's not fair that they would they would pay the exact same premium. So that that's what this is designed to reflect through experience. But again, you know, history tells us that the the effort that you put in your your loss ratio is is significantly impacted by the amount of effort that you put in so that that's what the, that is the the uh crux of the of the experience mod i guess and that, and that controlling your own destiny because you're going to get out of it you're going to you're going to uh, the savings that you get are going to be <coughs> directly proportional to the to the amount of effort that you put into it. So, um, so here, here's some other, you know, these are just little examples. Experience rating plan ultimately generates an experience mod that is used in the premium calculation. And we'll see that in just a few minutes. But, but a one is average. I think that Kimi schools, and don't quote me on this, but I think that the, the number of schools that we have, I think the average experience mod is right around a, a 0.91 or a 0.92. Uh, a 0.7 experience mod would be 30% below the average, and a 1.3 would be 30% above the average. And so basically, if, if you think about it in your premium, were a hundred thousand dollars and you had a 0.7 experience mod you're basically going to pay us seventy thousand dollars if your premium at first is a hundred thousand dollars but your experience mods a 1.3 then you're going to pay a hundred and thirty thousand dollars for that premium and and so uh you know you can see that that's a lot of money right there i mean that's that's uh sixty thousand dollar difference for the same product you know the the hundred and thirty thousand uh, dollar premium is, is the the coverage isn't any better than the seventy thousand dollars it's the same exact product so you think about you know a, a sixty thousand dollar difference and they're out there i mean we a few years back there was a school that that uh, I know of that had a, their experience mod was a 2.02 and um, it's a lot of money. I mean, that's that's two times what they, they should have been paying. And, and the issue that you have here is that, you know, all of a sudden when you're, you know, you're paying two times what you should be paying, then you got to look at that budget and start trimming trimming some other things and you know oftentimes in the I know and from what I hear in the transportation world you're looking at bus monitors and and things that that uh, are very needed uh, but but you no longer have the ability to provide because the costs have gone up so it, it is uh, it is a significant and then we're going to talk briefly about rate adjustment factor debits and credits. So once we look at a premium, so or, or a school, and this is where the underwriting comes in, really. To this point, what we have looked at has been the estimated amount of payroll, <clears throat> the uh, division of that payroll into the class codes multiplying it by the rate for those class codes uh, and then multiplying by an experience mod so now we've got a number that that we're going to look at a little closer and so we have the ability to apply credit one you all saw the difference in the preferred and standard rate tier uh, and then we also have the ability to add credit or, or I'm sorry, take credit uh, or add a debit to it. Um, so basically a, a, a credit is, is that, and these are rate adjustment factors that allow the premium to be modified to reflect risk characteristics that are not captured in the experience mod. And it, this gives you a pretty good example. So credit could be applied 
uh, any event that we know, Kimi knows, the underwriter or your, your safety representative knows that you have good management controls. You have good safety programs. Uh, your loss experience in the past has been has been excellent. Site conditions. Um, the overall culture of a business, you know, the, the management attitude towards safety. The things that are, you know, that when we do walkthroughs and the condition of the equipment, you know, do they have PPE uh, at their uh, to use and are they using it? Things like that. Uh, that, that we know, yes, you know, uh, basically, lack of a better way of saying it, that when you look at the average school, they go above and beyond the average school in making sure the works, work environment is a safe place to work. And they have the management controls in place and the buy-in at all levels and so on. On the other side of the coin, you know, let, let's, uh, let's say that... Uh, we we have met with them and 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 there is poor management control in terms of you know they just don't have any safety controls you know much less a few they don't have any their loss experience has been bad that reflects that and you know it, it's something that we are going to have to add a little premium to because we feel like we'll need that to cover the risk and the other thing that you know you know if one is is in that bottom uh they're probably going to be in our standard tier of rates too so if you think about it they're already paying you know our, uh, the the higher rate uh their their experience mod is probably already above a one or not where it could be and then we're we're adding a little bit of debit to it because we don't feel like that's enough money uh, to cover the risk from from what prior history has told us and and what it looks like uh, on the ground, so to speak. So, um, going back just briefly talking about credit, I think that it is, you know, and and, and here's the deal. And hopefully, those of you that have experience with with Kimi. Um, would agree that you know our safety team is our role is not to you know come out and and find things so that we can put you in a debit situation or or whatever our role is to help now i always tell people the better the better you look the better we look and so having us out one uh, helps from from several different ways. One, it gets us a really good picture of of what um, your business is doing from a safety perspective. If there are some things that could help, we will make recommendations to you. But we'll also help you. We'll ha we'll help provide training. We'll help uh, implement those programs. And we have sample programs on our worksafeky.com uh, website that are free that you can use and and many of them you can you could have in place on paper within 15 or 20 minutes or ask us to do it for you we'd be more than happy to do that but what also what also that does is 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 it shows the underwriter that you you guys are working with us you know you're you're seeking our guidance and our help and, uh, and and we may come out there and come back with a report that says, man, everything looks great and no recommendations whatsoever. We don't make recommendations just to be making recommendations. We're, we are, uh, uh, and again, if we do make them, we're, we're more than willing to help out in any way, shape or form. So, and again, that gives you um, oftentimes what makes somebody uh, eligible for those that preferred tier is the fact that we know that you you know you're doing safety training you're doing site facility audits you're doing you're providing that ppe and it's being used and and you're having you know they have you have uh 
railing around your mezzanine storage areas or whatever, you know, and, and the majority of our recommendations that we do make are really minimal in terms of time and effort, you know, can, and, and conduct a, a maybe a monthly or quarterly safety meeting. And, you know, that's one of the things that I always tell people too, is that, you know, safety meetings don't have to be, you know, pull everybody in, provide donuts and coffee, and and we're going to spend an hour talking about safety glasses. They don't have to be that way. They can be a five-minute topic of the month and be very effective. Uh, the, the thing that I would always encourage you to do is document those and send a sheet of paper around the room, have a, a, the date topic and signatures of those in attendance simple as can be. Keep a copy for yourself. And if you have a safety rep uh, that you work with, uh, send them a copy of that so they can put it in your records uh, so that when others are looking through your file, they're going to see that, oh, that, oh, it looks like last year they had three safety meetings in their uh, transportation department. Um, Here's where they did, uh, you know, one of the things we have on, on our website too is a facilities audit form. You can go through and, and very easily check off things that shows that you looked at these, you know, looked at your uh, AED, make sure the battery was still working, looked at your um, fire extinguishers, but, but also the floor conditions, the, uh, the ladders in good shape, whatever. Um, and 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 send a copy of that in uh, to them so that they see it, and that the underwriter, when they're pricing that policy, they'll see that hey, they're 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 doing a good job. Because I'm telling you, underwriters are often just itching to find a. Way. I know <laughs> this will be hard to believe, but they're often itching for a way to recognize excellent performance uh, uh, effort that's being made through the pricing of the policy because they they we don't want we're not looking to man we need to get all the money we can get we want to accurately price a policy so that there is a great potential that that we will keep that policy for a long period of time and develop a partnership um and, and i think we do that you know davis county is another school system that we we have that we have uh we, their uh, monthly safety committee meetings. We try to attend as many of those as we can. Those are great ways to um, not only implement change, but also uh, keep an eye on the uh, company store, so to speak, and 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 learn about uh, conditions and you know what can we do to improve and so on and so forth. So that uh, so that being said. We're going to roll over into um, how we calculate a premium. And so I, I kind of went through this a little bit. And, and this is, uh, you know, it's an example, but I can tell you it's it's uh, the average school. It's probably, it probably actually is a school. Um, I had uh, one of our underwriting managers just kind of put this together, but so if you look at this, you're looking at, at the first section, the college professional, there's $15 million in payroll in that uh, class uh, so, or class code. So we're going to divide that by 100. We're going to multiply it by the 45 cent rate, which it shows this one is in our standard tier. So the premium for that group of employees is going to be sixty-seven thousand five hundred. Um, Ninety-one hundred one, which again is the um, custodial food service, it's maintenance, interior maintenance, is on two million dollars. Divide by hundred, multiply by three dollars and eighty-five cents, so you've got seventy-seven thousand, and then there the drivers. And and when I say drivers, it's going to be transportation as a whole. Uh, but it's a million dollars. And so we're going to divide that by 100, multiply by the rate, and then you have uh, 52,300 for that portion. And you sum all that up, 
with 18 to 18 million dollars worth of payroll, the premium is, is going to be $196,800. Um, and, um, so that, again, that that's any school in the state of Kentucky that we insure that has this exact payroll, I keep pointing and right now I'm realizing y'all can't see that, but as the exact payroll of this right here and is in our standard tier, that's what their premium is going to be to begin with. So now we're going to add the experience mod. And their current experience mod, for example, is a 1.3. So we're going to take 196.8. <clears throat> the additional premium for the experience mod is $59,040. And then you can see we added a 10% debit on that. And, and again, the reason we do that is because we, we, we may or may not have much information about this account. We may have gone, chances are, we have gone out, uh, met with them, and m maybe we made some recommendations, but we never got a response on those and uh, followed up. And they said, yeah, you know, we're, 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 we're going to do that at some point. We just ain't got to it, round to it or whatever. Uh, so we added some debit to it. We added 25000 additional dollars to it because we felt like we needed to to cover the expenses. So if you see that, now their total premium is $281,000. So just around uh, $85,000 more because of the experience mod and because they make very little safety effort. So now we're going to look into uh, oh, what I want to tell you too is that experience mod is based on three years worth of data. So they they do not include the uh, most recent policy year. They're based on three years uh, and are applied for one year. Most recent terms not included. So for a policy that's being written in 2022, we would skip. 2021's data and use 2019 and 18. So it's it's a rolling calculation. So the bad thing about that is, is if you have a bad injury, say in, in, in 2021, it's going to hit the experience mod next year and it's going to be on there for three years. So it, it has a, a, a kind of a long tail as far as the impact that it has on on the experience mod. So you can see there um, the the policy period information that we use. And again, it's designed to predict future loss experience based on previous results. So the other thing that that I li always like to talk about is some some pieces to this and and to ensure that it remains credible and its predictive ability is maintained they they apply claims limitations to it there's there's a, a experience rating adjustment there's a there's per claim accident limitations and then there's primary versus excess loss and we'll talk a little bit about that um here in that the experience rating adjustment so medical only claims are reduced by 70 percent the example here is that if you had someone that um got a cut goes to uh we'll say it happened at seven o'clock at night they go to the emergency room so it's expensive and they get a couple stitches and it turns out that the bill's a thousand dollars well that's going to be reported to ncci but ncci would only use three hundred dollars of that towards your experience mod they reduce those by 70 percent and they do that for a couple reasons one is to encourage people to 
report everything. And there is, I know that some of you out there have uh, probably either been told or heard from someone else that, you know, it, it's really to your advantage to pay your small medicals. And, and that's not true because of this right here, because this little $300 addition is not going to impact your experience mod that much. You're not going to make, you know, a thousand dollars, uh, back by paying, uh, a thousand dollars for a medical only claim, if that makes sense. Especially and that's when, when only $300 goes to the computation. And the other thing is, is that, and it's, it's, uh, we we have and I may other carriers may as well have uh, when you report a claim you have the ability to say that this is for report purposes only. Any one of those that that is uh, talks about it here. Any one of those that uh, are set for report purposes only, they are are usually they're I think they're closed that night and have zero dollars incurred and we don't even send those to uh ncci and an example of that might be that you know hey my i i kind of tweak my shoulder a little bit um don't really feel like i need to go to the doctor to get it checked out i just wanted you to know should you report that to us yes because you never know where it's going to wind up um the goodness in that for us is if you have 12 of those over a, a, a period of a year, then we're going to say, well, let's talk about this. You know, what, what are, what's causing these injuries and uh, so on. And um, is there something we can do to prevent these or, or, or lessen the likelihood that, that they will, because, you know, the, the good thing about knowing all of your, your information is, is that you get a better picture of, of what's going on. And um, it gives you a, a way to kind of direct your safety efforts, so to speak. Well, do we need to buy some material handling equipment so that we're not lifting those transmissions? Or I don't know, uh, or whatever. But uh, it's good to get a, have a good picture of, of everything that you have. Um, and again, it does not go against you. And I can promise you our underwriters 10 times would rather see somebody that reports everything than looking at loss runs for a school system that has 130 employees and they reported one claim last year. We know that there are, there are more things going on than just one reportable claim in a year's time. I, I can tell you that. So um, anyway, report them um, so that we can get a, a good picture and we can help you. And again, that's what we want to do is help, not be in the way. Not You know, I tell people as far as our services, and I do see it this way, that, that our safety services are a value-added um, piece to what you pay us in premium, without question. Our trainings are free except for um, uh, CPR, and it's a minimal cost. It's the cost of the cards. Uh, we do the OSHA 10 and 30 hour classes. Those are eight bucks a, a person. Uh, and those are the cost of the cards. Everything else is free. Forklift training, um, scissor lift training, air lift or whatever, general safety, uh, slip trip and fall classes and so on and so forth. All that stuff's free of charge. And um, so anyhow, use us. Uh, I know you will find the experience to be outstanding. So, okay, per claim accident limitation. So if you, this lessens the impact of large losses and the experience mod, there is, it, it's a weighted average, a three year weighted average. And they do try to reflect two pieces frequency and uh, severity. So th this is talking about the severe cases and there's a per claim accident limit of $222,000. 
a multiple claim accident limit of four hundred forty four thousand dollars and that that would be where you had uh multiple employees injured from the same event uh, so and, and the reason they do that obviously is you know if you had a, a five million dollar claim and your experience mod went from a 0.8 to a you know 4.6 the next year or two uh then there would probably be people going out of business so you know it, it is uh, it, it is limited so that it's not going and i honestly i've not seen you know you'll see it jump sometimes 30 points but that's that's extreme usually it's it's 15 points maybe uh we'll say but they're capped and limitations vary by state and are reviewed at each rate filing so they change that every year so looking looking back there is such a thing called a, a split point and we're going to talk about the primary versus excess i'm not going to get into this too much but there is a split point and you and basically in the numbers here you can see um there's a loss amount and, and, and what that was, what part of that was a primary loss and what part of that was an excess loss. And, and that gets into the, um, where there's reduction and so forth. And so uh, the, the primary loss emphasizes claim frequency. And that's the first $18,000 of a claim. And then anything beyond 18,000 of a single claim uh emphasizes claim severity and so that's what they do to to recognize both pieces of that um moving on you'll see that that there is a greater weight given to uh frequent losses than excess losses primary losses have a much greater impact on the calculation and the reason being is you know if, if you look at this um these three groups of, of policyholders will say insured C is going to look much worse in an experience wide calculation one because their frequency is up and there's an old insurance term that says that frequency breeds severity and that and it's true you know the 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 you you think about foreign bodies in the eyes you know if you have 20 of those in a year's time you know eventually somebody's going to lose an eye or lose their their sight from that and that's that's just the way it goes um it's an indicator that something bad is getting ready to happen whereas insured a has the one claim that was a hundred thousand dollars and um that that's one of those bad day deals you know and and uh, if you look at the history of your employment probably once in, or your your school probably one you know the average i've heard is about once in every 10 years you're you're probably going to have a a bad back injury or bad shoulder injury or bad knee injury or something along those lines maybe more but uh at least one in ten and so that does not impact your experience mod the way the others do um so now we're going to look at the experience of an individual business and how it's compared with others hey jeff yeah hey can we see if we have any questions or anything yeah, from absolutely. anyone um it, does anyone have any questions at this time i know it's been a lot of information um and i also put a question in the um chat thumbs up for yes that base for no does your district provide report only situations to your insurance company i won't be reporting who said what um, but it gives us an idea of um, currently what your district is doing. But if you have a, a question, please go ahead and put it in the chat or um, right. unmute and we'll be happy to uh, get those answered for you. All right, Jeff, just wanted to check in. Okay, and, and I do know it's a lot. Um, and Elisa, you're gonna, are you gonna share the slides? Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. 
and at the end, my contact information is on there. And and uh, please feel free to email me, call me. Uh, if I don't know the answer, I'll find it for you and get back with you on it. I guarantee you that. Um, so now we're going to look at the experience of an individual business compared to others in their own industry. And so here is the calculation. And I'm not going to go into that because too much because um, my little brain would explode. But if you look at what, what the components are, there, there's actual as they are primary and ac actual uh, with expected, uh, the weight that's given to it, uh, the excess that we talked about and so on and so forth. And then it's going to, um, uh, you know, they call it a simple formula, but basically what it's doing is it's taking actual losses divided by the expected losses, and that's kind of your experience mod. So you, the, the actual losses of your individual school. So if, if you had, for the sake of argument, if you had $80,000 in losses, however, you were expected to have 100,000 in losses um, based on, you know, the calculation and so on and so forth, that's going to come up with your experience mod. It's not that easy because it's weighted, but that's the general gist of it. So now I'm going to get into to a little bit of the fun stuff where, it, you know, I say all of this to get to this point, basically. Um, my, a very long-winded point. And I appreciate all of your all's uh, uh, staying, staying, uh, staying with me. But, um, and why this, we call this, uh, you know, controlling your own destiny tailoring the cost of insurance to the characteristics, and I like that word, to the characteristics and experience of an individual employer. Because you don't always, you know, you can have the best safety program in the world, make all the effort in the world, and things are going to happen. Um, but again, you hope that, that you get right back on track, and the years prior are going to help you you know, based on those characteristics of your business, the culture of your business. One thing somebody said one time was uh, the, a safety culture. You know, ask, ask a business, do you have a safety culture? And sometimes people will say, no, we really don't. But the, the, the answer is, yes, you do. Every business has one. It may not be the one you want, um, but you have one. And we, you know, we can help you improve that. And, um, and, and I'm not, I, I say we, and I'm speaking to all of you as if you're key policy holders, and I shouldn't, and I apologize for that. Your insurance provider should help you, um, is what I'm getting at. So one of the primary benefits of experience rating is it encourages loss prevention. It's what we talked about, those characteristics, safety efforts, claims management practices by businesses, um, you know, in, encouraging the, the re, uh, uh, return to work programs in terms of, you know, and there's good ways of going about that. And and uh, we can give you some tips on that. You know, don't be closed minded to I don't like light duty. I like alternative duty because I do believe there are things that can be done uh, most times, especially in in uh, maintenance areas and that that uh, someone with limitations could perform and provide um, a meaningful work to everyone else, you know, to themselves and everyone else. And, and then the statement that policy holders truly have a direct impact on the final calculation of their premium. You, you really do. Um, and then we're going to look at a case study loosely based. Uh, it's a, not too loosely based, but this is actual. These are actual numbers and, and uh, um, as a result, workers' compensation costs escalated significantly. In response, the district placed a dedicated focus on establishing a culture that made employee safety a top priority for everyone throughout the district. Um, so we're going to um, look at 
um, their 2018 experience mod. You're going to see here down at the bottom that their experience mod was a 1.3. And this it, it's for this year. So remember, we skip a year and we're using the 17, 16 and 15 uh, data. And you can see they had 27 claims, uh, 21 claims, 17 claims, um, 223,000, 211,000 and 260,000 in claims dollars that um, that resulted in a 1.3 experience mod. Now let's look at, you know, we looked at this earlier, but this is the numbers that we were looking at. So uh, 1.3 mod increased their premium by 59,000 and then uh, a debit because they they were not really performing any type of, of safety effort at all. And so uh, that added another 25,000 and put it up at 281. So again, they're paying about give or take 85,000 or uh, 85,000 additional dollars in premium. That's a lot of money. And that doesn't even count, you know, the amount of money that they probably spent for substitute teachers, substitute drivers, uh, so on and so forth. Now we're going to look at the 19 mod and because of the fact that um, the numbers, you can see the, the number of paid claims is going down, uh, the loss dollars went down. We dropped this year and we added a, a much better year. And so their mod dropped to a 1.16 and when we calculated their premium, we still had 196,800 initially. We multiplied that experience mod of a 1.16, which is 31,000 additional dollars, but we felt like they were moving in the right direction and had implemented a few things. And, and so uh, we only debited the account 5%. And their premium this year was 239,700. So they saved about, give or take 50,000 from the year prior. So now we're going to go to 2020 and their mod dropped to a one. So now we're on level ground. Um, and you can see that, you know, even though the, the frequency went up a little bit, or the number of reported claims went up a little bit, the claims dollars dropped. And so their EMOD went to a one. And in the same, using the same calculation for, for payroll, uh, one experience mod. And this year we didn't do any credit or debit because, hey, they're moving in the right direction. Now their premium is 196.8, about 85,000 cheaper than it was two years ago. And, and um, so now we're going to go to 2021. Loss information shows that uh, nine paid claims, $50,000 in claims. Look at, you know, here you've got $700,000 in claims dollars these three years. You've got about 200000 these two these three years, I mean. And the frequency has dropped because we're getting the message out there. People aren't taking those chances. They're not using chairs to access light bulbs. They're not uh, whatever, you know, so the, the culture of safety is improving. And, it, you know, it's like uh, turning a big old ship. You know, you don't you don't turn a, a you know, a, a 180 degree turn it uh, instantly. It takes it a little bit. You know, it's it's slow turning, but it, you can get there absolutely. And so, because of that, their experience mod uh, saved them thirty five thousand dollars from their premium, and we gave them some credit because we we wanted to encourage them to continue doing what they're doing, and that credit was an additional sixteen thousand. 
So you're looking at them saving about $50,000, give or take 51, because of the efforts that they've had over the last two or three years. And, and not, but, but what that more importantly does really is that frees up $51,000 for other things, you know, that now we can get us a bus monitor for a couple of our buses, maybe. And, and, uh, now we can, we can purchase some of that equipment, um, and so on and so forth, you know, so it, it, it helps, uh, and, and this gives you kind of an overall pick of, of where they were. You know, and if you roll those savings over three years, they saved $136,000 in a three year period. That's quite a bit of money. And that's just on uh, the workers' comp. You know, the, the, and, and again, more importantly than that, when you go back through here, you know, you see how many more people went home at the end of the day the way they showed up, you know, healthy. Uh, morale improves because you know people aren't injured uh they're not talking about um so and so that fell or and broke a hip or or whatever um so it, it's just benefits across the board uh reduced frequency and severity provided the opportunity to have direct control or there's workers comp premium costs, which resulted in substantial premium savings. So how'd they do it? Again, dedicated focus on establishing a safety culture, specific steps we'll talk about. You know, I do believe in a formal written safety program. I do believe that, that people need to know the boundaries, you know, it's kind of the, uh, especially when that is given to somebody on the first day of their employment. Uh, lets them know that safety is a big deal here. And, and again, we have uh, safety programs available that you could tailor one to you in about, pro no, no joke, probably 20 minutes. You can put your own, you can put your own logos on there or whatever, and you take things out, add things, and they don't have to be. Here's the other thing that I like to talk about on a, on a formal safety program. I would 10,000 times rather see a one to two page document than see a three ring binder that's five inches thick that has OSHA standards printed out in it, has uh, all kinds of stuff that nobody's going to read that. But if you give them a, a, a straight up, here's, here's the expectations, they will read that and they'll remember that. I believe in safety committees. If you're, if you're, uh, school does not have one. I would strongly encourage you to do that, and and that in each department have representation there. Um, continued training, you know, and again we talked about that. Continued training throughout um, throughout the employment. I think the the time frame on that tends to. You know, I'm going to be honest. I, I, when I say this, I, I say it with love, but it's the truth. I think sometimes, and I'll just make it generic, but businesses have safety meetings for the sole purpose, really, of having that sign-in sheet so they can say, yeah, we did it. Um, you can accomplish that and, and do it right. You know, do it don't do, hey, we don't, we're not working today. So, hey, let's have that safety meeting. We need to go through all this stuff really fast and get the, you know, have, have a little five minute sit arounds, you know, and talk about whatever. Um, very important, especially when it comes to a safety culture. Facilities audits, critical, you know, and we're going to see some, some things here that when I talk about uh, school injuries that we see uh, that I'm, I firmly believe facilities audits would go a long way to prevention and, and housekeeping is a big part of that. Um, trip hazards, uh, wet and oily floors, areas that tend to ice up, areas that water tends to be uh, brought into the building, you know, on rainy days from, from it dripping off people and so on and so forth. But facilities audits, critically important, and safety equipment. Um, you guys Jeff, are really, we, oops, sorry. Go sorry, ahead. we have a comment. 
Um, Jody is stating that they are getting hit with cumulative trauma work cases with people retiring or quitting. There's no safety issues with them, but this new law is letting any workers in Kentucky file for this and is destroying their rates. Um, do you have any information on that? You know, that that is not something necessarily that we have seen yet. And, and it may be something that shows down the pike. And, and I would, I tell you what I would recommend is, you know, look and see what type of cumulative trauma and, and Jody might be able to share that. But what specific type of, is it a carpal tunnel situation? Is it a, a shoulders or knees or, or what? And look in, you know, to the, to the root cause of that and see, you know, what, what was it uh, typing that did that? Was it... Uh, uh, what type of repetitive motion was causing the cumulative trauma to begin with? And I will tell you that um, we we insure a whole lot of banks and and very uh, very uh, clerical type of duties, and and those are those can be prevalent in that doing. Um, ergonomics assessments on employees and, and looking and seeing, you know, how their desks are set up. We do that a lot, man. And there's, and I don't know if that's the particular situation, but um, I know that uh, we, there's a bank that we have, one of them that we probably do two or three ergonomics assessments, uh, uh, probably a month on, no joke. And people get nervous about an, uh, an ergonomic assessment from a, from a, maybe an administrative standpoint because they feel like, oh, this, you know, this is going to get expensive in buying ergonomic equipment and all this and that. And I will tell you, that's, that has not been the case with us. We do it at Kimi when somebody has, uh, oftentimes what we see with, um, a, a desk setup is is very minimal changes can be done without the purchase of anything and make a huge difference make a, a, a really big difference and um i don't know okay. if that address that and joe um, you'll have my contact info if you want to call me and we can discuss it further but absolutely yep Okay, um, and it looks like the comp judges aren't taking into consideration uh, what the districts are doing, um, and they're they're having to settle for twenty thousand dollars or more, no matter what the doctor says. In addition, especially with the school bus drivers, um, just for you as financial um, finance officers and new directors, we are um, adding a couple of options to our school buses to um, assist with the repetitive on the at least with the um, the the arm and carpal tunnel. Um, we have a device that we have approved to be added to the bus. Um, to the parking brake, which is where a lot of that comes from. And uh, the newer buses, some of the newer buses, there's uh, IntelliBrake, which we are, um, we'll be hearing about at the spec meeting, which will, um, is basically a push button versus a pull push. It's just a button that they have to, to push um, for on and off. So um, hopefully in the future um, that will the, that will assist. But if there's specific things that we might be able to address with the ergonomics of the school bus itself, um, the driver's area, please you know pass that on to your directors to to forward to me um, and my team so that we can have those discussions um, when we do our specifications because we have those on an annual basis. So we can do research throughout the year and bring it in the following year. And you can retrofit your buses for uh, many of these uh, areas that we update. So and that's, that's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up because I can remember, I don't know, five or six years ago, there was a school system that was having quite a few of the, the repetitive motion. And it was the just that, opening and shutting the door, reaching out, grabbing the handle, pulling it to them, open the door, push it back. And they they went with that uh, um, push button system, and it eliminated it. I mean, it, it basically went down to nothing. No, very few, if any, claims after that. 
you know, and and the issue is another issue is there there it's it's tough, you know, uh, on those, and a lot of times people they tend to, and I'm not saying that they are or they aren't, but if my buddy that drives the bus beside of me has it, you know what, my shoulder's kind of bothering me too. What doctor did you go see? You know, so I mean, it 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 can be it can flow pretty easily through. A place if that makes sense and it looks like there's some issues with like the comp judges so um do and you that, as, know, as that, that that is that's that is something that's pretty much out of our control it um it, they're you know work, work workers compensation itself well, you know, and I guess can be liberal in some respects, and uh, yeah, it, 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 that's a tough one. And you had, were you going? Do you have a question? Oh, I, I was going to ask: Does Kimi, um, does Kimi, I don't want to say uh, lobby, but uh, work with representative representatives? Um, at the state level um, regarding some of the issues with with uh, workman's comp or anything of that sort? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. And they, they uh, matter of fact, they're, they do that quite often. And, and, um, and, and, you know, and they come to us for information on things and, and um, because we are Kentucky based and that sort of thing, they feel like we have a pretty good, uh, Eye on what's going on and that sort of thing, but you know, workers' comp is uh, it. You know, it, it, a lot of times, if you know, if if a doctor is saying that they have what they have, it's very difficult to go against that. If that makes sense. Yes. Thank you. You are welcome. Good questions. Were there any others? Uh, at this time, it does not look like it. Good. Or not good or whatever. <laughs> All right, I will proceed. The other thing that, that was added to this is outside of time and effort, cost of each of these programs should be minimum. And, and you know, Jody's right. I mean, there, and I kind of said that. You can go through all of these uh, safety programs and, and uh do all of the things that you feel you can do and then you can have some some uh bad things happen you know and and it uh it, it's tough but on the whole if you stay the course big picture things are going to things are going to take care of themselves if that makes sense um and, and there's not a lot of uh of uh monetary uh requirements for doing any of these just time and expertise basically so a couple of transportation related and i thought this was very interesting and uh, so in 2018 transportation departments we had 389 reported injuries of those 151 were falls slips and trips which was 39 or it accounted for 39% of the claims dollars and 39% of the reported injuries to Kimi. Now we school wide, you'll see, I think you'll see here in a little bit, but I think this year it was about 40 some percent of the 44% of the injuries from schools to Kimi were slips, trips and falls. Uh, 77 of those were strains. Um, which was 17% of the claims dollars and 20% reported and 60 motor vehicle accidents, 41% of the claims dollars and 16% of the reported. But these three accounted for 97% of the injury costs. Now, I will also say that, you know, not all of these are at fault at all. You know, it's just that they were in some of these we, we potentially subrogate against and get some of that money back for you. Um, but anyway, 97% of the injury costs were these three, slips and falls, strains, motor vehicle accidents. Uh, 2019, 145 slip trips and falls, 
27% uh, of the claims dollars, 42% of the reported, 35 motor vehicle accidents, 10% of the reported, 36% of the claims dollars, and 99 uh, or 69 strains. For 36% of the claims dollars, 20% of the reported. So, and those accounted for 99% of the injury costs. I skipped 2020 just because but I did look at it and it was very similar. Um, probably should have put it in there so you could see it, but it, it was very still very similar, even though it was an odd year, it was still pretty similar. 2021, there were 151 uh, slip, trip, and fall, which amounted to 37% of the claims dollars and 43% of the reported claims. Uh, 35 motor vehicle accidents for 34% of the claims dollars, 10% of the reported, and um, 58 strain injuries. And these accounted for 91% of the injury costs. Now, school-wide, um, looking at the individual class codes, and remember teachers, 7,800 claims reported injuries, 60%, um, but 45% of the incurred. And then um, custodial food service and that, almost 4,000 injuries, which were 31% of the reported injuries and 33% of the incurred. Whereas uh, transportation or, or driver class code, 1,159, which was, only, and this is kind of interesting because only 9% of the reported injuries, but made up 22% of the total incurred. So, you know, and, and going back and thinking about, you know, slips, trips, and falls, what are things that should be looked at? Well, good facilities audits should, you know, a lot of those are going to be ice and snow, can be, uh, but there are also oily, greasy floors. There are falls from heights, uh, open pits that some bus garages have that people uh, walk into and fall into, and then strains, you know, thinking about equipment. Can, looking at those individually and seeing, you know, what was really the root cause of that? You know, do we promote team lifting? Do we have material handling devices that could, could eliminate some of the exposure and so forth? Um, that's pretty much got it for me. I know my time is about up, but uh, I would love any questions or comments. I would also, that is my uh, information in terms of, of getting in touch with me. And I, I, anytime that I can help with anything, please, uh, please feel free to give me a call. Um, my cell number is, is the second number. And then my email address is there for, for email. Um, but if we have any questions, we got a few minutes now. Okay, so I just wanted to kind of do a recap here. Um, we, we talked about the work, workman's comp coverage um, and some things that could help with our districts are like the safety meetings, five to 10 minutes um, once a month can show effort towards um, uh, having a good safety culture and um, lowering, possibly lowering some of those costs of um, workman's comp um safe uh, workman comp coverage um safety inspections or facility inspections um one of the things that um i'm i'm curious about and you may or may not know with the trip slips and falls um do you know if any of that is um reiterated or um if any of that is contributed to improper type of shoes uh, um yeah, absolutely. You know, okay. there, there are things out there too, like the shoes for crews that often the, um, uh, and we have some schools that, that provide those shoes. They're not horribly expensive and uh, especially with food service and that, but they have other shoes for, for drivers and, and uh, maintenance staff and garage staff and that. 
Well, it'll be interesting if you have, um, if you can help me research, you know, what would be proper wear for a school bus driver? I mean, we know for a um, technician, non-slip shoes, you know, um, I think some of our districts, and not all of them, but some struggle with um, drivers wearing flip-flops and things like that, which then come to, you know, hurting their feet, hurting their toes, not properly being supported um, while they're driving, things of that sort. Um, yeah. So if there is anything, I would be happy to share that with, especially my directors, um, to to help with some of those um, slip trips and falls uh, claims. Sure. Well, some uh, of them, and I don't, I, I don't get a dime from shoes for crews, but I know I think <laughs> some of the, some of them have a trailer that they'll bring out, and you know they can try shoes on, and that. they're a pretty cool setup. And okay. they, if you if the district doesn't provide them, I think they would offer payroll deduction pro payroll uh, programs where they could take 10 bucks a, a month out of their check or whatever. But okay. uh, they have been. And, and the issue with that is, you know, e even, you know, you know, and I don't think you even have to go that far, but as much as necessarily even just promoting it and just tell right. them. Right. Have hey, a policy you, in place on the proper shoe shoes. wear. Yeah. Make right. sure they're, they're a skid resistant type of shoe. And that could totally be one of the safety meetings. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, Okay, and then another thing you talked about was reporting injuries. Um, even if they report only um, and they don't go to a doctor because some of that can come back to you later. So if you at least report it, you've got the documentation um, and that you're doing your due diligence. Um, and you can also help review those issues with the no reports um, to, to see how often they're happening. Um, and the underwriters take into consideration all of that. Um, in addition, Kimi and other insurance companies um, may provide the OSHA 1030, uh, 10 and 30 hour, which would be good for our technicians um, and uh, some of our leadership that we have out there in the in the garages um, to ensure that the, that they're working properly in a safe environment. Um, CPR, as many of you know, um, CPR is now required um, by regulation. And so if you want to certify your folks, um, you can go through them for certification. Um, also, you know, there's a, a ton of training that they have. Um, I believe Jeff and I were working on some type of calendar to put together uh, and it kind of got put to the wayside, but it's something we can look at uh, in the future. Um, but that's what we've got, you know, just kind of as a overall, you know, um, uh, recap um and so i don't see any questions at this time so i do want to say thank you jeff for for taking the time um you know we have a lot of new directors especially in transportation and i think this information is very useful for them to open up that conversation with um the finance officers and vice versa to allow them to take a look at some of those um Let's see, did you say there are any requirements for bus drivers, shoes, sandals, flip-flops? Are these direct district decisions or transportation rule? Okay, so um, we don't mandate um, what type of shoes that need to be worn. However, when you look at OSHA requirements, um, you know, the shoes have to be appropriate for, uh, for what the job is, you know, so flip-flops underneath of our dashes, um, there's hoses and things that can burst and those hoses can cause burns to the feet. Therefore, having closed toe shoes is really important. Um, and so I found a document, I worked with uh, the um, OSHA representatives um, and the only thing that we could find was out of California regarding shoes and bus drivers. And I'll be happy to share that as well. Um, but it's definitely a district policy that you should have in place because you want to limit um, the possibility of a uh, bus driver or monitor being injured, even on the bus, you know, when they're trying to help someone stubbing their toe, cutting their toes, getting burns, things of that sort. Uh, Wayne Winter says their policy is no open toe and must have a heel strap. So if you have any questions regarding your policies, please reach out to us. We'll be happy to help you um, with that. But thank you all. If you don't have any more questions, you are good to go. And I will get those um, for everyone that attended today. 
I sent this morning um, the ELA credits for last month, and I'm going to do the exact same thing today. Um, I'm just going to get it out there. It won't have your name on it, uh, just so that you have it. So, did you take attendance? But you, I did. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, Jeff, I appreciate your time and effort that you've put into this, and um, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. Well, I, I appreciate you having me, and and uh, and I meant what I said. I I'm not going to sell you a Kimi policy. So if you have a question and we don't write you, please. I'm 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 all about safety. So. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye bye. bye.